We have already discussed how important Maine's electricity is to our daily lives, how different our work and leisure time would be without it. Maine's electricity is only possible because in 1831, Michael Faraday discovered electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic induction sounds very complicated. The word electromagnet is already very familiar to you. You already know that a moving charge has a magnetic field around it. You already know that an electric current is made up of moving charges, electrons, and that a wire with a current flowing through it will have a field around it. You have plotted the magnetic field pattern around a current carrying wire. You have experimented with electromagnets and the motor effect, how the repulsion between the magnet and the magnetic field from the electromagnet can make movement occur. So you are familiar with the idea that electro and magnet go together. The word induction might not mean as much to you though. If you induce something, you make it happen. Doctors can induce a birth, making the woman start her labour. The doctors are in control of when this happens. Electromagnetic induction is like that. You, the scientist, make electricity flow in a wire by moving it in a magnetic field. You are in control of making the electricity. It was Faraday that figured that if electricity flowing in a wire produced a magnetic field, you could use the repulsion between magnetic fields to make an electric motor. The movement, magnetism and electricity were linked. And he wondered whether magnetism could produce electricity. It made sense to him that if you had electricity and a magnet making movement, that perhaps having movement in a magnet, you could perhaps make electricity. He experimented and found that if you take a wire and move it in a magnetic field, you can make electricity flow in that wire. You can induce a voltage between its ends and that will make a current flow. He discovered that the size of the voltage he made depended on four things. 1. The speed he moved the wire. 2. The angle he moved the wire at. 3. The strength of the permanent magnet he used. And 4. The number of turns of the wire. Being a physicist, he wanted to put those things into an equation. In doing this, he worked out that the size of the voltage actually depended on two things. How fast the wire cut through the magnetic field lines and how many turns of wire were cutting the field lines each time he moved the wire. When looking at the rate of cutting of lines, the number cut each second, how fast the wire moved obviously made a difference. The faster you moved it, the bigger the voltage you got. But the angle the wire made with the field lines made a big difference. If you move the wire at right angles to the field lines, you move a shorter distance in between each field line. This means that if you move the wire at a steady speed, you would cut more field lines when moving perpendicular to the field lines than when at an angle to them. And you would cut no field lines at all if you moved parallel to them. Having a stronger permanent magnet means that the field lines are more densely packed. Therefore, there will be a shorter distance between the field lines. Moving at a fixed speed, you would therefore cut through more lines of magnetic flux, another way of saying magnetic field lines, than with a weaker magnet. If you loop your wire into a coil, then each turn of the coil cuts through the field lines with each sweep of the wire. Therefore, each segment of the wire will produce the voltage, and these will add up to give you a total voltage. 
the number of turns times the voltage you would get for a single strand. When you cut through the field lines in the opposite direction, the electricity produced flows in the opposite direction too. To summarise, moving a wire so that it cuts through the magnetic field lines induces a voltage across the ends of the wire. The size of the voltage produced depends upon the rate of cutting of flux lines and the number of turns of wire. This changing of kinetic energy into electrical energy is called electromagnetic induction and it is the way in which we can turn the movement of air, steam or water into electricity to supply our homes. Without electromagnetic induction, your home would not have a mains electricity supply. No electric light, no telly, no computer, no DVD player, no games console, no fridge, no microwave oven, no washing machine, no tumble dryer or vacuum cleaner. Wouldn't life be different?